Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. I'm your host, Siren Frost, and in today's video, we're going to be doing yet another Digi- Uh, not Digi. I have Digimon on top of my, ma my mind right now, because I'll be leaving for Digimon pretty soon, so that's why. And don't ask me why I'm speaking, have a French accent, it's not my, my problem right now. <laughs> Anyways, um, we're going to be doing another budget deck profile video for you guys. This one's for Lyrical Monasterio, the Kari build. Um, now... This is going to be like something similar to that of my original um, Kari build myself, but the small without the small luxury parts of it. But it's still very compatible kind of compatible choice. Um, I know the new Lyrical Monasterio Collection Part Two uh, came out on the thirteenth, which was my birthday, which fucking sucked because I want to get at least going on a case on that. But unfortunately, it just never happened, and bills came up and tires and whatnot so it was a kind of a bit of a bad thing but luckily i have a friend of mine who is willing to help me get some cards from that collection as well so i guess gotta save up the problem is i have to save up money for um and getting a new ipod soon before they get retired and so i can have that music on the way so that'll be out of the way plus my loans are coming up and my phone bill is gonna be coming up pretty soon so it's gonna suck that's what part of me adult was like pretty much um, <clears throat> so without any further ado, let's get on with the deck profile video. Enough yapping. I'm very sorry about that. Um, this is the Kari build. Um, now, believe it or not, this is like a little bit more aggressive than my Magnolia deck, but I think both decks are pretty good in strength wise. Um, this is just for an idea that people can use when they're on a budget. And it is very interesting to do a budget video after not doing much of a budget video for myself. So, Magnolia and Kari are two, literally my, two of my most favorite, or not, not my favorite, but two of my first um, debuts on doing budget series. Or should I say the B series. So I already priced out all the cards from TCG. I trust TCG with a fiery passion, so there's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. So, that's... That all comes down to it. And the deck right here I've chosen is pretty much um, less than $20. So you can basically just, you know, you can pay as much as you want with this one if you guys are really on a budget. So it's still a fun deck. <clears throat> okay. So, of course, for the ride line, we're using the Estes uh, series for some of them. And this is Mion. This is uh, Ki Nanami. Grade 2 is Kira. And the... Ugh. And the main uh, grade 3 in the deck is, of course, Kari. So, that's the right up the ride line I'm just going to prefer the most. Um, I know everybody doesn't like this ride line too often. It's not as aesthetically pleasing to the eye but for me it's not 100% bad so I chose that for a reason so yeah that is the ride line for this deck for a trigger lineup it's similar to that of my Magnolia build but this is your own opinion you guys you have your two cents on it so we're gonna be playing um, four Konamis for heals three draws which is um Sex, uh, Suskia, I think it's called. Suskia. Three of that. And then we're doing eight crits for this deck, which is, uh, four green dragon lease. I don't know. I don't know how it's spelled with her name, but it's pretty much, um, L L S E, I guess, or an I lease or something. But that's just a wild guess. So I wasn't going to limb there, right there. And then, for next critical, we're playing four Noras, because I like ghosts, too. So, dragons and ghosts and mermaids and elves are mostly this. This whole deck is pretty much all magical creatures, pretty much. And for the over-trigger i chosen is the mermaid one, which is Mysterious Twins, Romia and Rumia. So, that's the over-trigger I did choose. And the, what's best about this over-trigger right here is its skill, this whole skill. During this fight... You get, during your turn, all your rear guards get 10,000 power. So, it's going to be a very beefy card. 
and it's just for remainder of this fight. So you can even you'll still gain a ten thousand power. I'm not hundred percent sure about the persona ride ability, but as it's by itself, it'll just be ten thousand straight up. So that's all you probably need. But yeah, I chose this as my trigger lineup because I feel like Kari can be more aggressive when she wants me. <clears throat> Sorry, guys. Okay, so I am playing 12 grade ones in this deck. And since I'm trying to go for like a mermaid theme to this version, because, you know, Kari is a mermaid type herself, while the others are like vampires or ghosts or war beasts, you know, all that stuff. But I figured this would be like a nice way too. It reminds me of so much of a Bermuda Triangle and how strong their power will grow depending on um, like Harmony for Laurel and that forced one, that fucking force one like that fuck the little story on that one but that's all in the past this is the new era and right now I have uh, four Berters so her skill is when this unit boosts it gets an additional 2,000 this turn so for me she's an Omic 10k uh, booster all on her own. That's just pretty much it. And then I'm going for uh, Christine for the four mermaid perfect guards. Um, her skill is resides. If I have two, or, it's the same thing as the other ones are. But if I have two or less cards, choose a card from your hand and discard it. So if you have two or more cards in your hand, then you have to discard a card. But if you don't, if you only have one card, and that's, it's, yeah, and Christine is literally the only one, you can play it for free. So, and this is a pretty cheap card too. So, I know people like cheap, you know, with some good stuff. I would, I'd say, I, uh, I say cheap because, you know, most of us can't afford luxurious cards like much as I can. But then again, I'm the one who also chose not to play any SP cards in my decks just because I they may look beautiful, but they're not what I exactly wanted. You know, it's not a need. You know, people want to flex out their decks like almost three hundred dollars with a deck or six hundred dollars, depending on the meta, depending on everything. But that's for people who can literally afford it or have daddy's money, pretty much, as I call it. But that's just my personal opinion. You can be entitled to your own. The next one, uh, from the deck is we're playing four copies of Blue Hair Prodigy Rhesius. Rhesius is that girl that you like to have in your ball court. Sure, she may have 3k um, as a booster, but her skill makes up for it. When this unit is placed on rearguard circle, choose one one of your other units, and it gets plus 10,000 power in the end of the turn. So, if you have a grade 2 in the front row, Rhesius' skill is she could, she provides you with the additional, <clears throat> with the additional 10,000 power. So that alone is right there perfectly corresponding. And yes, she's a demon, but this is mainly going to be all mermaid theme. But there will be some demons on the way, so to speak. And yes, I'm speaking with a French accent, so I don't know why, I just do. I think it's one of those, just one of those days. Now, for grade 2, um, I'm actually playing 12 grade 2s in this deck. And there is no order cards in this one at all. I was thinking about putting it, some orders in it, like a set order spell, but I'm like, eh, I kind of went against it. So we're only just playing the old-fashioned way, so to speak. Okay. So we're playing the main grade two for this deck. It's going to be Brilliance of Elegance, Aerith. And I play her at four because her skill is a Kari skill. Is when this unit attacks while boosted, if your vanguard is Kari, Kabas 1, choose up to one card from your hand and call it to an open rear guard. So it's an automatic superior call right there when she's been play when she attacks or been boosted. So that's kind of why I chose her. It may cost you a counterblast, but 
I don't think you really ever kind of blast that often in this deck that much at all. Um, hardly ever. So you can just go hardcore on it whether you feel like it. Next, I'm playing four copies of Blooming Season Rudy. Rudy's ability is just part of Bermuda Triangle, so to speak. When your rear guard is returned to hand, this unit gets plus 5,000 power in the end of turn. So it's basically a power, power hungry deck, pretty much. And it gains attack power, it's a pure calls, it just hits, <clears throat> it hits major pressure to your opponent right there. So that's kind of why. And next, for the next, and for the next demon we're playing is four charming style, um, Cecilia. So, Cecilia's ability is, is when his unit is placed on rear guard from the hand, if you have three or more other rear guards, counterblast one and you draw a card. So she's also there to help you fill your fill your hand up more. Um, it may cost you a counterblast, but hey, it's not a one per turn skill. So you can choose however you want to put this however you see fit. So to speak. And finally, for grade three, we're playing uh, six grade threes in this deck. So of course we're playing three of the Kari's for the Persona Ride ability, and of course her skill is at the end of battle this unit attacked, if you Persona Ride this turn, choose up to two cards from your hand and call them to rear guard in different rows. So there you go. That's why we mainly have her there. And then we're playing three of um, Energetic Attendance uh, Kalfi. Kalfi's ability is a good one. When this unit is placed on rear guard, this unit gets plus 10,000 power into the end of turn. So it's an automatically like an automatic 20k beat stick right there, which the way I kind of build it is basically um, a very heavy hitter kind of type of aggressive deck. Now I know many people don't like those kind of decks because well it's like there's no strategy behind it. It's just pretty straightforward. It's very basic, but I'm thinking of the idea where a player can win at re uh, tournaments at local tournament for that matter, and also playing for fun at a very affordable price. So. Yeah, that's pretty much all I have to say. But yeah, you guys, that is the conclusion deck profile video of the budget version of Kari. I actually really had a great time doing this deck profile for you guys. And also, checking out the prices was a bit of a stretch. But hey, I don't have my, uh, my manager to check me out with that one. So that's why. But I hope you guys did enjoy this video, this video very much. So thank you for staying tuned for Deck Profile Weekly. Um, for I do two deck profiles a week, one day a week, because my schedule is getting kind of a little busy due because it's summertime, which is going to suck ass, but you know, what else new? But overall, I'm glad you guys enjoyed my videos. It makes me feel really happy to know that people are actually interested in hearing what to say, even though it does sound kind of splurgy sometimes, but hey, it's all good. So hey, you guys, I, that's the video I have for you guys today. I hope you guys enjoyed enjoy the video. I hope you guys have a good day also. Um, um, oh crap, I just got distracted. Fuck. Um, oh yeah. You guys be safe out there today. Make good choices and don't do anything that I would do and that's spend like a shit ton of money on cars that you don't actually need. Um, also, once again, shout out to King Kingsville. Um, I'll pronounce King V. Kings Kingsville V. Let's put that put it that way. Uh, <laughs> Because that's, I know it sounds like an insult, but it's not an insult. I swear to God to you, it's not. But anyways, shout out to you for giving me this inspiration, inspiration and a challenge to make a deck at a very affordable price. And knowing which cards are actually good and what not's best. And if you guys have your own different opinion about the deck's choices, then go for it. Uh, send me a comment down below. Just let me know what you guys think. Subscribe to my channel if you guys are interested and like the videos I do create. And there is no Patreon, so don't ask me for a Patreon because I'm not going to do it. Fuck that. Anyways, you guys have a good day. I've been your host, Aaron Frost, signing out.